I'm here with Richard Cheatham, um, who is double world champion, I think. Uh, double world champion, yeah, that's right, yeah. Double, 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 double world champion. Double, double, double. Uh, Richard's involved in coach development, and uh, but I like to call him the professor of play. And so we're going to play double, and I'm going to ask him some questions that come out of it. This is Richard's idea. If you're watching this, this is this is a great way of asking questions. I think in the home environment or in the coaching environment, and I'm I'm really going to talk to Richard about how how when we look at coaching sessions or when we as parents engage with our kids around sport, how we might tease out some questions, tease out some learning in a way which helps helps our children enjoy that process, not feel got at, uh, feel really really encouraged. So I put myself on the on the spot here because uh, if you've not seen double every two each card. Matches with another card, doesn't it? In some way, there's always one similar object, only one on both those cards. Um, and I'm going to try and ask Richard a question. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to time for 20 seconds. We'll play for 20 seconds. When the timer goes off, I will ask a question. So, I reckon I'm pretty good at asking questions, and Richard's really good at playing games and double. And I will see if I get one card off, and I'll be amazed. Right, go. Um. Target. Uh. Dolphin. This now a tortoise. It's a tortoise, yeah. Cat. Cat. Yeah! Oh, All right, and that's, that's the timer. That's, 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 that's the first one. <laughs> that's cat. Right, cat. <laughs> um, oh, that's a tricky one. Cat. So, cat coaching. Um, did you have a pet growing up at home? Labrador. Yeah. Labrador? Yeah. So definitely a dog person? Definitely a dog person, yeah. Fantastic. What, what do you think that gave you upbringing, having a dog around? Uh, well, great companionship, you know, I mean, it got me up in the morning to go and take it for a walk. Uh, we lived in Somerset, I, my house opened up into fields, so... Yeah, just appreciation of uh, looking after, you know, look after a pet, you got to look after, you learn the responsibility of having a dog. It's a good thing to have as a child, and um, yeah, it, it was... He got me out, got me to be active, you know, he'd come cycling with me, we'd go walking together. It was a real strong bond between, uh, you know, a child and a dog, yeah. Do, do you think, um, that often we talk about kind of parent, child, coach, kind of triangle and things mm. like that, but actually we often neglect things like pets and siblings, mm. don't we? As kind of just healthy emotional outlets and, yeah. and relationships that, that parents can foster and I think dogs just love you, don't you? Uh, I heard someone once say, you are exactly who your dog thinks you are. Right. Okay. Which I just think is a lovely, um, lovely sentence. And, and I've got a chocolate lab, and I, you know, whatever time of the morning, whenever I get home, he just sits there with this expectant face of, excellent, I love you, we're gonna, we're gonna hang out together. It's great to have that kind of neutrality. Cool, let's play again. Uh, Apple. Tree. Oh, can't. Lightning. Ooh, look at this. Back in now. Yeah. Half moon. Dirty uh, stomach. Dirty stomach. Dirty stomach. Okay, next question. Oh, what was on that one? Because that time around. I don't think my. What was on that last one? Uh, it was the baby stomach. It was the baby yeah, stomach? Yeah, the, yeah, the milk bottle. Okay, yeah. the milk bottle. So, um, let's just think about. Those times when our children are upset, mm. you know, and I think like with the baby's bottle, that's when we first learn to kind of soothe them and comfort them. Yeah. What, what would your advice to parents be for children who have, you know, they've had a bad day at yeah. whatever it is sports-wise? I suppose one of the things I've, I've learned really is that what's important to us as adults, we need to appreciate what's important to, to a child. So to you it may be just X, Y, Z, but to them it's important. Their world it revolves around different things to what ours revolves around. So, you know, if they've dropped the ball and not been picked, missed a session or something's broken or someone says something at school that is quite hurtful or distressful or whatever, then you, you can't be dismissive of it. You know, it is important. And I remember doing the podcast on Stu Armstrong about Pick and Mix Wednesdays with my daughter and that when I was away, my partner Nikki had to go and make sure she did it and she don't really have to do that. And I said, yeah, you do, because it's important. It's, it's what we do each week. It's, it's a ritual. And um, so I would say, with your children, you know, accept that things are important to them and, that, and don't be dismissive of it. Because yeah. if, it, if it's giving them this anxiety or they're celebrating it, you know, it may just be something minor, but that's important. They can now do that. So 
that, that's why I like the question, how was that, rather than did you have fun? Because mm. I think did you have fun in, implies that, that you need to give an answer around fun around yeah, exactly. it. Whereas how was that can, you know, actually that was this or that, that mm. was that. And you might not, have, might not have seen it. My son always got into a habit a long time ago about having peanut butter and jam sandwich on a Friday. And I forgot mm. once. And that, that was the end of his world. It's important to him. It's really it? important. I've not forgotten again since. Yeah. It's, well, it's not worth the great Friday. Here we go again. Ready? Um, I, I, I'm definitely winning. Um, went in too soon. Fire, lift, fire, fire. Uh, the sun. Is it a sun? Yellow splodge. Maybe that. Let me have that one. Look, the candle. You're coming back, you're coming back at me. Uh, target. I'm losing that. I've lost, lost my focus. Hang. Which one's on there? Which one's on there? Uh, I would have gone. Well, oh, I suppose there's no. We're still looking, aren't we? Um, and this is when you light bulb. There you go. So this is when you, you're convinced at some point there isn't one similar. Yeah. But then you just you notice. You, you need to look. You know, you notice. So, so you you lecture coaching. I just watched Richard's students for a couple of hours. Fascinating. Looking for the kind of aroma of Richard Cheatham's kind of lecturing in the, in his students, and it was it was all over the place. It was brilliant to see. Um, what have your light bulb coaching moments been about how you deliver coaching? Well, I mean, there's so many light bulb moments. I think light bulb moments come to you when you least expect them. And um, I think the biggest, one of the most significant light bulb moments has about awareness. Awareness of, of, of individuals in front of you. And when you, when you notice they do something and let them know you've seen that, that makes a significant difference to them. They get, lift, they, they get lifted, they visibly get lifted. And it could be minor, and you had to have 20 people in front of you doing the same skill, and you just notice out the corner of your eye that somebody's tried something different, and they've been trying it, trying it, and then it comes off, and then you bring them back in, and you said, "Did you just see what I, I saw this happen?" And it happened last week uh, with the coaching, the catching session I was doing, and so my light bulb moment, I suppose, is to create environments where people can feel that they are noticed, you know. Maybe it's somebody. It's what they do all the time, and it's not new to them. But I would say, with a group of people where there are a range of abilities, it doesn't take a lot to pull out people and say, "I saw you do that." I, th I think that's really, really powerful. I know we've talked about that mm. just before, and certainly I know as parents, you can get into the habit. Busy day, busy weekend, trying to get all the sporting fixtures that get the practical arrangement sorted. That you mm. forget to notice the things that your children do around the home or the way they interact with one another or the way they interact with their teammates that you mm. see that actually really reinforce the values you have as a family. Yeah. So the way your child greets their teammates when they get on the bus or, or the way you notice them picking up the litter after the game or helping the coaches pick up the cones or whatever. And, and I think um, sometimes as parents we're quick to notice the things they haven't done <laughs> <That's right. laughs> rather yeah. than yeah. noticing those little bits that, that refine their character and make them a good person. I think that for me, um, is a real challenge around parenting. I challenged one of my children about doing something recently um, and they recently challenged me and said, are you challenging me about stopping that? And I've stopped and you haven't noticed. Mm. And actually I had noticed. I'd just forgotten to say, actually I really appreciate the way you've been doing that differently mm. recently. Uh, I think that's a very powerful lesson for both parents and coaches just to keep an eye out on what, what we think is helpful. And, mm. and especially when people either do the same thing week in, week out, we don't want to do it for granted or feel like they're taken yeah. for granted. I mean, the, the noticing, sorry, the noticing is interesting about the please and thank yous. Yeah, you know, as a parent, you'll always notice that. And I did an article years ago about thanks, coach. Just thank it was just thanking the coach in the session. At what point do you, rec do you make, have recognition for what they do, the small things they do for you? And uh, it, you know, so we, we thank our players for turning up and we make them say please and thank you. But to be encouraged and say thank you for all the people involved in that coaching environment. Yeah. You know. And that, so and that, it's gestures. Gestures are important. I talk about it. gestures isn't buying you a present. No. It just is, is is actually saying thank you very much. Brilliant. Let's play one more time. Okay. What's the score? Uh, me a lot. You, you if you know. I <laughs> think it's me. Even. I, I don't know. I'm not keeping. Oh, oh, exactly. oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh no. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, uh, question mark. Sorry, I put my hand on the strap. It's a ploy to turn upside down. Then you throw uh, me. See, ladybird. Uh, stop sign. Well, last one. I love heart. There you go. There you go. So love heart. Oh. Okay. Now, now you are. I mean, 
I don't know if you can see on the camera down to the boxes of games all over the place. You love you love games. If you had an hour with kids, or an hour with students, or an hour with parents, and you could spend an hour imparting your wisdom with a PowerPoint presentation, or Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, or play five or six activities, which which would you do and why? Uh, well, I wouldn't do PowerPoint. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> Look, I'm not decrying PowerPoint, okay, yeah, it's the work of the devil, but um, <laughs> no, it, I think, you know, I, I came from, a, I did my teacher training a long time ago when we had to make stuff, we had to be creative in teaching things, and I've not had that crutch of a computer yeah. to teach, so I would have plenty of games, I'd have Double, I'd have, I'd have uh, things like Jenga, which I've used quite a lot, a lot of inclusive games, a lot of games that got challenge and stretch, a lot of games that are collaborative, so uh, teams in games, um, individual challenges as well. But, but isn't that just play? And is and yeah. that it's an emotional experience. Yeah. And, oh, it, and we want to coach with an emotional experience. You know, we remember enjoyable emotional experience and we want more of them. And I had a great time when you coached me last week. It was great fun. It was a good it was a deep emotional experience and I can't wait to come back because it's what I envisaged it being. Yeah, and I think um, Certainly, some of the sessions we just saw some of your students do, they were they were playing games that had very clearly a skill repetition mm. plan, but didn't look like the actual game. That, yeah. that, so we saw a rugby exercise, a rugby kind of grubber kicking game yeah. that didn't look like anything that would necessarily happen in a game rules wise, mm. except the kick itself. Um, and and so, what what are parents to do if they see that sort of thing going on? Well, I mean that. I did some work with, with Scottish Canoe and we, we spoke about this with some of the elite paddlers and the coach set a very clear remit and said you can play but is it transferable, right. is it contextualised, you know, and, and so it, it looks like a game and it's a playful game but in there is a skill element for it um, and he wanted his sessions to be enjoyable and he wanted to be um, connected, he wanted to have a good connection with the sport, he had a lot of time, we spend hours training hard to be the best we can be uh, if you lose that enjoyment element of it then it, it's fair, it's almost like an on button, but it's never off. We have to have an on and off button. That's what we like as human beings. Yeah. So I used it. And I don't like the word reward, so I never use it as a word reward. It's integral. So if I want you to push yourself hard, I'm gonna have. A, I, I know you need an off button. So play is a connection with one another. There's very often. If you look at the, the grubber kit game, um, yes, it's a game. A lot of play in there, and the game with the tags but there's a lot of footwork, agility, mm. decision-making, um, accuracy. All of those integral parts of skill acquisition and learning are you know, integral in that play. So it's deliberate play. There's a purpose behind it. You think you're playing, you're watching them playing. But actually, I'm, I've created a game where I get their skill acquisition, they get a playful experience, and we walk away both happy. I really like that kind of, what do you call it, the off button of, mm some of that pressure because you know the privileged environments that I get to go into are you know there's a people young people going to camps for two or three days and it's very intense mm -hmm. and I think again parents I would I would say you know how are you facilitating a game of double we've, we've just played and had a bit of fun with, with some questions around each one stopping mm -hmm. after 20 seconds how how are we as home environments as well as coaching environments just having the off button where we just just laughed I mean mm -hmm. my kids are a bit younger than most of the environments I go into but we just Tend to have a rock out after after meals, so each everybody gets to choose a song, and we just dance stupidly to it. And as their Brilliant. as their music choices are changing, and heavy rap is coming into it from the older end, it's a I little bit. It's, it's a bit. <laughs> man, I I can do the whole of Ice Ice Baby, so it's you mm. know, yeah, I can. So, um, so, but actually, it's just that kind of off part. It's just we've eaten, we've eaten a meal, we've mm. had fun together now. Partly because we recognise the calorie, the sugar rush of just eating anyway, and they've got a yeah. bit more energy, but. But how do we just just have fun and not that intenseness of questions around the sport and, and things like that? Well, intensity is like anything. If you do interval training, you push yourself hard, you you rest. Same thing with tra with coaching. You know, there has to be an off button to recover, recuperate. It doesn't mean you stop. It just means you do something different, less mm -hmm. intensity. Uh, and, it, and and if you get that balance right, when it when it's on, it's they're, they're, they're absolutely fully on because they've had that recuperative yeah. time to. To refresh and to, to re engage. And you talk a lot of people, you know, children enter sports because they enjoy it. They love that sport. That, those lips are, you know, you could relate it to love. What do you love doing? Yeah. I love doing that. And as you get older, why has the love been lost? Well, because it's too intense. And, and yes, we want to be the best we can be, but it doesn't mean we can't have 
that mix, that balance of playfulness, which is uh, a healthy balance, you know. And, and you know, you work with a lot of adults, I have the privilege of working mm. with a lot of parents, I, I think we both see that adults, to start off with, are kind of wary of playfulness again, mm. aren't they? And yet once we've kind of taken that, the lid off that can, they're, mm. they're really into it. Mm. Of course, their arm. Once you take their arm off. Once you take their arm off, yeah. And, you know, so once you get it's infectious. So I, I talk in. A, I've written, you know, a piece, in there, and in that piece, isn't I've spoken about this before. With a group of coaches in Northern Ireland, uh, really, you know, engaged in what they're doing, and I, was, I did a session on play, and an hour and a half they were playing. They, they were being butterflies running around the room, but it was their game, and yeah. what you'd done is you teased it out of them. You know, we, we'd gone from blue cold to red hot, but it had taken a while to tease them out. And they looked at one another and they actually thought permission to play. It's okay to do this, isn't it? So, so I think for parents who are really busy juggling work life, mm. they may be separated, so they're juggling kind of custody and things like yeah. that. And I, I reckon a number of my friends would fit into this as well as those that I work with. The playfulness has kind of become a low priority in their life. Yeah. Uh, Rich and I would want to give you permission to play again, <laughs> wouldn't we? Ha, ha, what, what can someone do to start to get that back? They're at home now, they've watched this video, yeah. they want to, they're like, yeah, I want to get playfulness back with my children, my 18 year old son or whatever. Yeah. What, what, what things would you encourage them to try at home? Well, I think it can be too artificial. You know, that's the thing. It's not to suddenly say, right, we're going to shift our relationship was, it was here and now we're going to go and get the Scrabble out. Yeah. I, I think it's actually a warming to it and it's yeah. actually finding out, uh, you know, Doggle landed in my lap, it might not be that one, but it might be something where you'll find some connection, it could be just light-hearted and then you actually explore and re you reconnect, you know, when you're 18, you've had a playful childhood, when you're an adult, you've had a playful childhood as yeah. well, it's, it's finding something that's a, a common ground and uh, I would say just find time to choose something, I can't give you a particular yeah. activity but it's, it's about the more time you spend with each other um, and playfulness can be conversations, it can be jokes, it can be watching a film that makes you laugh. You know, I mean, we'll all watch Shrek or something like yeah. that. Home Alone will be yeah, yeah, the twentieth time, wait, yeah. you know, and yet it will still make us laugh when uh, when those things happen. And and a reconnection, that emotional experience, and realizing how that makes you feel, is the start. Is the start of it. I think what you say is quite interesting because I suspect for adults to reconnect with play, we need to reconnect with a little bit of risk taking as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so actually, it, it is okay if we try stuff with our kids and it kind of bombs. We mm. kind of go, actually, we're going to try something today. Mm. Oh, that didn't work. Can we try something next yeah. week different? I think that you know we don't have to go right. I'm going to get double out or jingle or whatever, mm. or we're going to watch this film. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Just enjoy what it gives you, yeah. and then yeah. and then and then tweak it. I th I, th I think um, well in the book Forty Conversations, I don't say this is the only way to ask the question. Keep trying to find different ways of asking mm. this same question till you unlock that connection That's with exactly, your child. Yeah, yeah there'll be there'll be one thing. Yeah, my double will be somebody else. Somebody else will have different. And I think we're in long rights. People have said to me, you know, enough times grow up. And I think, no, I'm not, I'm not growing up. I'm actually on my non growing up time right now, you know, and because that made me laugh and that was funny and it was childish. And actually, the students I've taught to be fair, you know, the musical chairs without chairs without music was a great chance for us not to grow up. You know, we played we, and we learned and we got something that actually, if you've seen it, you know, has now been used by the coaches. It was a playful activity where we end up doing the human pyramid we play these games with them balloons and so on but deep learning deep connection uh with one another um and uh, did we grow up well no we actually we, we created a lot by not growing up uh, you know i i pay my taxes and pay my mortgage and i have a full-time job and you know I, i'm a responsible person but <laughs> i want my off button yeah you know and uh and and you know but, growing but you up, want more than that because eh? you just talked about having that deep connection you want to be learned and, and i think most adults I want, if you offered them that, you could mm. either live not trying to explore play, mm. or you could live trying to explore play and get this other stuff as well. Yeah. Which one are you going to take? And I think, you know, most people would want deep connection mm. and, and to carry on learning, to carry on feeling that they are contributing and having usefulness and have a, a healthy opinion on stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember one thing that was yeah, from a film, and it was just a growing up as a process of getting up things you like one by one. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I thought, you know, that's, that's a great quote. You know, I'm really that, sad. You know, yeah, I'll grow up now, and I've got to stop doing this, stop doing that. And actually, um, I, I, did, I defy that. And I've seen so many ex workshops where people have that inner child is not just crawled out, but it's busted out. Yeah. And I think if it's you know it's dormant, but given the right environment, the right chance, 
it, it comes out. And then when you play as an adult and you reconnect with that experience, then it makes you much more aware of when you coach children of how important that is. Because you've experienced it, you've reconnected and you're thinking, I really enjoyed that. I wonder what they'll feel if I get the, the musical chairs out of chairs or the, you know, these games. I bet they'll love it. And, yeah. and actually, uh, you know, children teach you a lot. They, they, they are a lot freer, they're less inhibited. Oh. And, um, I, th I, I, I often say children are some of the better models. That they, they forgive far quicker, they're, they're quite willing to give new things a go. They're, yeah. they're, they're trusting of somebody who seems to have something about them far mm. quicker. They're less sceptical. Mm. You, you know, really, the adult world could do with a lot. <laughs> could learn, a lot, that, that. Could learn yeah. a lot from that right now. Yeah. Um, Richard Cheatham, Professor of Play, thank you very much. Uh, very Palmy wants to come on doing this. Uh, what's your Twitter handle again? At 2 -wheel Prof. At 2 -wheel Prof. Really encourage you to kind of check out uh, Richard's Twitter feed because he often puts up some of the games that he, he's kind of playing or certainly links to them. And I've got to think of a new one now. This is, this is almost like balloons. I've gone through balloons. I've gone through Jenga, gone through balloons, gone through double. I'm now... On to the difficult fourth album. <laughs> I'm not sure what it's going to be. <laughs> Mate, thank you very much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Mm -hmm.